Hello, my name is David Finney and I am a Big Fix Technical Advisor based out of Denver, Colorado. In this video, I'll be discussing installing Big Fix Remote Control Server on a Windows Server. Before we begin, the QR code at the bottom of the screen will prompt an email, or you can see my email address just below my name, so if there are any questions about what I've covered, I'll be happy to follow up with you. Starting from the highest level, Big Fix Remote Control is broken up into five basic components. The remote control server, which is what facilitates a remote control capability. Remote control targets, which is what gives the system its software component for systems to get remote controlled. The remote control controllers, which is the software component to perform administration over remote controlled systems. Remote control gateways, which is what helps facilitate remote control sessions over a partition network with different security zones and then remote control brokers, which allows for remote control sessions to happen over the internet. All right, so to begin, there are a few ways for us to get this server installed and running. One being on a Windows server and another would be on a Linux server. Basically, we're going to use a fixlet to send down the software for the install on the target system, whether or not it's Linux or Windows, and then we'll actually run the installer. There is a big fix remote control server installer wizard that can be run on the downloaded software but for this example, I'm going to actually send down the software manually and then installing it, showing each step along the way. Now, like I said, there is alternative ways to do this. I've just personally found this to be the easiest and the most straightforward zero guesses method. All right, so to begin, I'm just going to go ahead and grab this uh, fix like see our download big fix remote control server to Windows, and we're going to take action on this. Just going to use the default location. And I'm going to send it to a uh, big fix compliance server uh, that we're going to go ahead and piggyback the remote control service on. And we're just going to wait for that to complete. Okay, that fixlet has finished placing the installer software for us to use. So I'm on the uh, target system right now. And I'm going to go ahead and let this uh, installer run. And probably take it a few minutes for it to actually extract. I'll go ahead and uh, bring you back in the loop once this finishes. All right, just finished. And uh, this is the first screen that you have brought to. I'll go ahead and kind of work our way through the uh, steps here. It's gonna be pretty much like a traditional software install, just a few little notes along the way type setup. Basic introduction here, um, terms of the license information. Looks good, you gotta to agree to that, of course. Installation directory, just gonna leave that default for this purpose. All right, let's get that ready now. So there is a lot of options in terms of uh, the database that Big Fix Remote Control rides on. Um, the first thing, I, I'm going to be using Derby Embedded for this one. Um, reason why is because I find that it works really well. It does work with every single one of them um, just as well. I just find that the uh, Derby with it being an embedded you know, database, it works pretty well and it doesn't require any other software components. So you could do any of the rest of these. Um, but for now, I'm just going to go ahead and use the Derby Embedded. So I'm going to go ahead and keep going with that. Database, um, that works fine. All right, so the web server pieces. Now, you can go ahead and set this up a couple different ways. Um, I'm going to actually just kind of make this the easiest possible way for us. Um, so for now, I'm going to uncheck these. Now, granted, um, you know, per different environments, we'll probably want to actually make sure that these settings are in place. Uh, but just to have everybody, you know, see it from the uh, highest level here, um, that's where we're going to go ahead and kind of send it to begin. Um, so you'll see here that basically it's going to be using uh, the, the URL basically is going to be the FQDN um, of the system itself, just with a slash TRC at the end of it. And it's going to be listening on uh, 80 uh, and 443. So that's basically how that works. You do have options for uh, FIPS and NIST compliance. Um, like I said, I'm going to keep it the simplest possible to begin. And so basically, oh, don't forget that. I always forget that, and I'm kind of glad that I forgot that because um, that's important to have. Um, I'm just going to put just a basic email just to get a spy for that. So that should get us through. Alrighty, so I'm just gonna let it use a auto-generated certificate. Now, granted, you could go ahead and actually set it up with your own certificates. 
Uh, like I said, easiest method first. All right, and we're not doing any single sign-ons uh, or anything like that in this. It does have that option as well. Uh, but for now, like I said, I'm not gonna be doing that. All right, so shortcuts. Uh, honestly, the one that I like the most is this desktop one. Um, I'll show you why here in just a, just a few steps later. All right, so then it's just going to give you just the uh, summary before you go ahead and do your installation. And we're going to install. All right, this will take a few minutes. I'll bring you back uh, once it's completed. All right, so now we're at the uh, completed step here. So, uh, yeah, looks like it went through just fine. Um, just so you guys know, it took maybe another 45 seconds, maybe a minute after I uh, let you go off that last recording session there. But anyway, I'm going to click Done. We're done with this. That looks great. Um, now, this is the reason why I always like that icon. So when I was doing that setup, this is uh, definitely a place I want to go ahead and start with, right? So uh, we'll let uh, Internet Explorer yell at me a bunch. Um, and we're going to go ahead and continue to it. And all right. So this is our first page. Um, now, with this being said, uh, you probably don't remember us setting any kind of username or password uh, during the actual setup phase, that's because we didn't. Um, when you start, uh, you have a super secret uh, username and password of the username being admin and password being password, all lowercase. Click log on, uh, Internet Explorer will yell at you again. Um, and then from there, this is where you actually get to your first page of actually resetting that. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of set it to one of my generic passwords I use. Hopefully I can uh, type twice the same. Getting yelled at again. All right, good stuff. So now we're in the base level of the actual server itself. Um, I know it looks very, very basic at this moment, but that's because we're still in the uh, phases of needing to enable it further. But uh, at this point, you should definitely consider this a success. Um, the server is up, it's breathing, and it's listening for targets, and uh, it's ready to go. Now, uh, one thing I will definitely say is that I typically kind of move over to uh, Chrome uh, or even Firefox from this point on. Um, and uh, the reason why is just because it renders the data a lot better. Uh, but I will show you that in some future videos here. Thank you for your time today and for joining me for the Installing Big Fix Remote Control Server on Windows Server presentation. If there are any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out because we are always happy to help. And uh, keep in mind, there are more videos to follow on the remote control subject. So keep, keep tuned into our channel and you'll uh, be seeing those shortly. Thank you again.